Hey there. Boy, have I got something really special this time around. Uh, that is a very old Winger Tejera there on the table. So, you know, Winger Tejeras are a kind of old uh, officer's knives, and the Tejera is just kind of a brand they would put on some of them. Um, this one has the oldest shield that Winger ever used on an officer's knife. This actually, this shield predates the crossbow shields that say Swiss or Winger Enochs in them. This shield was used by Winger from 1907 to the 1920s. So um, this is a pretty special knife. And uh, it is in stainless steel. So I would have to say that it's, you know, from the 1920s, post-1921. But it's the first time I've ever... Uh, held one with this type of shield and um, I think that's just really amazing so uh, this is not my knife um, a private collector has commissioned me to uh, he has bought this directly from a dealer in Switzerland and he has commissioned me to uh, refurbish it for him and so I am going to do the very best job I can on um, helping this knife along a little bit now this is an antique so, you know, the first thing you want to do is do no harm. And, uh, you know, you can't ever make something like this look new, and it would hurt its value if you tried to make it look new. But there are some things we can do to help it. And so I wanted to make a video. I'm not going to take before and after pictures because they're just too difficult to upload to my phone. Um, if I use my good camera, my 35 millimeter, I have to actually email them to myself, pick them up on my phone, download them. Uh, you know, it just takes a real long time. So I'm going to do a... Um, a before video uh, this one and then I'll cut away I'll come back and I'll show you my results and I'm doing all this on my phone so anyway we take a look at these fiber scales and we can see that they uh, they have some uh, cracks and uh, places out of them primarily around the rivets so these old fiber scales they can do two things they can kind of get brittle and they tend to break and crack around the rivets and they can discolor from the uh, corroding rivets and they can warp. And you can see this one has a warp there. You see, you can see through to the corkscrew right there. See that light coming through there? So um, one thing you can do with that problem, uh, if you can bend the scale back, they get pretty stiff, but this one actually can be pressed back down. It is possible to sneak some epoxy under there, clamp it, uh, but the problem, or the risk that you run, rather, is that the scale wants to go back to where it was, and it might just take the liner along with it, therefore creating a gap between the liner and the back spring. So you've just traded one cosmetic problem for another one, and a structural problem. So after conferring with the owner, I'm, we're going to pass on that. Uh, you can see that this knife um, has probably never been refurbished before. Uh, I'm honestly thinking that this is its maiden voyage on this. So, it'll be interesting to see what we can do. Brass liners, you can't hardly tell now. There's a lot of uh, corrosion, green. Um, but here's your corkscrew. Uh, it's pretty wobble-free. There's absolutely no snap to this knife. Um, you know, being fiber scales, we can't do the old hot sudsy bath trick. Um, but with proper penetrating lubricants and cleaning, maybe we'll get some action back. Here's the awl. Um, it's a little short. It's a little tortured here at the end. I'm going to try a little filing and polishing to try to remove some of those imperfections. Um, it's got a little bit of a little side-to-side -side wobble when it's open, but not bad. And then let's take a look at the um, opening tools. Here is the screwdriver cap lifter. And you can see I just have to pull those tools open and push them back. They're very um, gummy. Uh, this one's broken at the tip. You can see that. Uh, I've talked to the owner, and uh, he basically is deferring to me. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to grind that down until we get a straight screwdriver. Um, it's going to be a little short. It's going to be as short as the deepest part of that chip. But I do not think that that will detract from the authenticity or the value of this knife any more than a broken screwdriver will. So I'm going to do that. Of course, I want to polish those tools. Here's the uh, old-style can opener. Uh, that tool's in good shape. 
guess I could leave these open so we can look down inside the knife when we're through opening it up. This model has a saw, a wood saw. Here it is. Um, other than some rust, some ancient wood in there, petrified wood. Uh, it's in pretty good shape. Okay, on to the blades. Let's take a look at the small blade first. You know, the blade does read Winger Tahara, but you can see that that blade is wasted away from years of sharpening. It's heavily scratched. Um, there's nothing I can do about the wasting, but I think we can work out most of the scratches and put a shine back on that blade through polishing and sanding. And we'll put a fresh, proper edge on it. Why not? Why not? Uh, now the main blade. Main blade also reads Winger Tahara. By the way, nothing on the reverse side. It doesn't say anoxid or something, but it is stainless, I can tell. Um, again, wasted, heavily scratched. But I don't see anything in there that's too terrible that I shouldn't be able to work most of that out. Now the main blade is, let me close that just again a little bit. It's a little short. You can see the space in here. Close this up, makes it easier. You can see the space here that you know used to be occupied by the tip of that blade. So that blade has uh, been shortened at some point in time. You can also see all the corrosion and rust in there that I got to deal with. But uh, let's open these back up. Take a look down inside. All right, so um, here's down inside. And it's not a very pretty story. Let's see if I can get my light a little closer here. Um, as I mentioned, brass liners, but look at them. <laughs> So I'll be able to shine up that brass on the edges and, you know, the places you can see when the tools are closed. But I'm not sure there's any way I can get down in there and clean brass that's that far gone all the way down in there. But we'll give it a good go. And, um, yeah. So this knife is very rare. It's very old. It's all here. It's functional. It just needs some cosmetic help, some cleaning, maybe a little structural help on the scales. Um, and so we're going to get to work on it, see what we can do. I'll come back and show you the results sometime later. Okay, so let's look at the results. But before we get into that, uh, let me reiterate a few things about this knife. This is a Winger Tahara. Tahara was a brand name that Winger used on several of its different models on and off during the early years. Um, that brand was trademarked in 1910, and story goes Theodore Winger's wife suggested the name after a goddess in Tibetan Buddhism. But Taharas are harder to find than just regular old Wangers. And because of that, they're very sought after and collectible. Now, what makes this one especially rare uh, is that it has the, as I said before, the original shield used by Winger in the officer's models. Uh, it's not even in this lineup given in Winger literature. You can, however, find, however, find it in this image online with some suggested dates. So this uh, shield was introduced in 1907. Um, I think this knife is from the 1920s because it is in stainless steel. But it's not only very rare, it's also very old. This knife will soon be 100 years old. Okay, so let's just look at it in the, uh, I guess the order uh, that we looked at it earlier in the video and the scales first. Um, I freshened those up. I did patch them where there were chunks missing and large cracks and splits. You can see here along the um, rivets and pins looks a lot better. And uh, then I think we looked at the back tools. Here's the corkscrew. You can see down in there now that brass is uh, clean and golden looking. We've got some snapback on this knife. 
which is remarkable. Uh, all same story. The tip of the all looks better. Then I think we looked at the screwdriver. And uh, that tip has been fixed. And we looked at the can opener. That's a good looking tool. Next up is the uh, saw. The saw has a very, very small nail nick that's very deep in there. And all my nails are getting torn up. So I need a little help getting the saw out. So just a moment here. The saw's got good hard spring action. There it is. All cleaned up. No more ancient wood. There was a bunch of wood jammed down in the slot for the saw. It's too funny. And uh, I think then we looked at the small blade. Here's the small blade, and you can see the Winger Tahara Tang stamp. That's generally the only thing that sets a Tahara apart from a regular model is, is usually just a Tang stamp. Um, so that blade was badly scratched. Uh, it does have a nice uh, sheen to it now. I was able to put a, a good edge on it. It's very sharp. One thing I did notice about it, once I got all the gunk and junk out of there that was holding it firm, it's got a little uh, forward and back wobble. Nothing side to side, but just a little loose lock up there. It's got snap. Uh, and then the large blade. Same story. Good edge. Some sheen. And of course, it's got the Winger Tahara tank stamp as well. I should have left all this open so we could look down inside. I'll run back and do that real quick. I always forget to do that. I'm going to leave that saw in there. But uh, you can see down in there now that it's a much better state. I was not able to get you know all the corrosion off of the brass liners um, deep down in there. But I was able to clean up along the edges and giving particular, you know, um, attention to the places that showed through the openings. Ouch. I cut myself on camera if I'm not careful. Okay. So um, this was a real international collaboration. This knife was procured by a dealer and a true expert in vintage Swiss Army knives in Switzerland. Um, bought for a very serious and discerning collector in Canada who had the trust uh, in me to have it directly sent to me here in the U.S. Uh, to work on it. And so I want to thank everybody involved, but I particularly want to thank the buyer for his confidence in um, allowing me to, uh, before he ever even saw the knife, uh, do what I felt was necessary to it. So um, thanks, Dave. I enjoyed working on this knife. I hope you enjoy having it, um, and it's soon on its way to you. So that is an ancient winger to Hera with a very, very rare shield, first one I've ever had in hand. I hope you've enjoyed watching this. Have fun collecting. Mm -hmm.